Hi, whoever that was. Was that Pam? It is Pam. Hi, Pam. Do you want to show yourself, Pam? Look at all the people oh, streaming in. Yeah. <laughs> we have people. Scott Marsden's here. Of course. Hi, Scott Marsden. Excellent. Okay. We are getting started. And Andy Myers is here. Also Julie Meyer Houston. Analyst. Julie Meyer Houston. We know her from the Twitters. Houston. Oh, she's great. <laughs> Excellent. We're just letting people join on in before we get going. I hope everyone's having a fabulous evening and off to a great start this week. I know we're, we're ready to wrap it up with Friday here on our doorsteps. Let's see, we have 16 so far. Who else do we have in here? Julie Levy's here. She's pretty awesome. Wow. Lori Gaynor, Rafa. Thanks it's for joining a us. Cool group. Yeah. All it's those cool. fellows. Yeah, lots of Napa Learns fellows. We love that. Oh, Rose. Hi, Rose. I haven't seen you in ages. All right. Let's see here. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mario Piombo. I'm the Director of Innovation at Napa Learns, and we're really excited to bring you our second installment of the Distance Learning Series, hosted by Napa County Office of Education, Napa Learns, and LearnShift. We're really excited this evening to have an, ex an esteemed guest presenter tonight, John Carippo, the Chief Learning Officer at Q. How you doing, John? I'm doing good. People rarely use the word esteemed with my name at the same place. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to lend that, you know, that title to you. No problem. I, I, will, I will honor, I wear, wear it proudly. <laughs> Wonderful. And, uh, and we also have Barbara Nemko with us, Napa County Superintendent of Schools. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you all here. And Pamela Redman from Toro University and LearnShift. Hi there. Can and an Apple Learns board member. Yes. So I have to be on my best behavior with, with Pam. <laughs> and Andy Myers, who's an educational technology coach for Napa Valley Unified School District Management Schools. And hey everyone. Also supports our digital innovator program at Napa Learns. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, the distance learning series uh, is a wonderful opportunity for our educators here in Napa County to access free professional learning around how to bring technology and virtual learning and not only those tools, but also the pedagogy and the instructional strategies that should go with it into our classrooms. And absolutely, we, we, we wouldn't have John if it wasn't for Barbara's vision to not only bring John into, into the circle, but also to kick off a series like this where we'd be able to provide resources for our educators uh, when they most need them. And so I'm really excited that we get to have a fabulous high quality partnership with Napa County Office of Education to bring you guys these uh, lectures and these uh, hands-on professional learning opportunities. Um, John, do you want to give everyone a little preview of, of what we're going to be doing tonight? Yeah, so um, I'm a big fan of learning by doing. So instead of a keynote where I talk to a microphone and a camera for an hour, we're going to do some activities. And uh, I know Barb loves, I know that Barb loves primary. So we're going to have a focus on like K3. But the things I'm going to show you guys work uh, with adults, as you will prove by doing these activities yourself. So the whole idea is here to talk about how we can be far more effective academically and do a lot less work in a blended learning COVID online format. Awesome. Do we want to jump into it? I'm ready. Uh, I just need, I need the crowd response. I need some like, come on, let's go, you guys. Let's do Woo! this. <laughs> you know, okay. John, Here we when, go. We, when we first started thinking about this, we were thinking it would be really important for right now. 
And as we go further along, it looks like it's going to be really important for a long time from now. So this couldn't be more timely. Okay, your turn. You go, boy. I, I agree. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plus one you there, Barb. Uh, I think that, uh, that this, uh, we have a window here to potentially change the way education works once we exit this phase, right? So if everybody would do this, or many of you, shouldn't have to be everybody, um, go to join.nearpod.com on your computer, open up a new tab, go to join.nearpod.com, and you will see here, and uh, I, I'm going to use my stamping tool, up here in the corner, there's a code, and I put another code down here. Um, put, when it asks you for the join code, put that in. So I'm going to give everybody a couple of minutes to do this. Pamela and Barbara and Andy and Mario, have you guys ever been in a Nearpod session? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm okay. not sure. Oh, yeah. That, that is a good answer, too. Andy, you have? Yep. So I'm going to be talking about edgy protocols tonight and, and also walking you guys through what it looks like to be in a Nearpod environment. Now, just, uh, just to, for clarity's purposes, um, I think Nearpod... Pear Deck, there's quite a few tools that have similar aspects. So please don't run out and say, John said Pear, uh, Nearpod's the best thing ever. I'm just giving you one example that I'm working with. It's, it's hard to do two of these in one session. So I'm just getting let, let people jump in. And then Barb, if you have not uh, worked in, um, uh, if you have not worked in Nearpod before, down here it shows me who's logging in. And so I can see my students logging in. Hello, Rafa. Nice to have you in here. Scott Marsden, you're tardy. Let's do this, dude. You should know how to do this. Um, and so join.nearpod.com, E-T-Q-B-X. And if anybody just wants to say, I'm a little burned out right now and I just want to watch, that's okay too. Because with the seven people that I have in now, we have plenty of people to demo the concept. So um, join.nearpod.com. And thank you, Mario. I see that you put that in the chat. I'm going to go forward. Remember, the little box is up here in the corner. It stays there. So if somebody's still working on it, no worries. Okay, so this is, I'm going to be talking about what we call QCraft, which is like kind of like, um, you know, Lagunitas. They craft a certain beverage. Um, and the idea of bringing the idea of craft back to, to classrooms and teachers. And also reducing dependence on corporate lesson plans. So um, this is one of the first things I want to have us do is I want to have you guys jump in. What's something that you're appreciating about teaching right now? What's something? And so what you do is down here at the bottom, you put in uh, something that you are appreciating about teaching. And then when you hit post, it'll show up here in the collaborate board. And if you click on the little picture, you can even put an animated GIF if you want to. So one of the things I am liking about um, teaching right now is lots of fast innovation. Now, don't get me wrong, everybody. There's a lot of things I don't like about what's going on right now. Um, but one of the things I do like is a lot of fast, innovative thinking. And if you can see on my screen, I'm just going to type in innovation and then GIF. And then I'm going to hit the little magnifying glass there and I'll get some innovation GIFs. Oh, that looks like a good one. So I'm going to go like that. And then when I hit post, it'll pop in here. So as you guys and gals uh, do the same kind of thing and post years, they'll show up as well. And I think this is a really good practice, Barbara, for setting the tone and mood. Uh, I think, you know, the fact that we're not being able to be together uh, uh, in face-to-face -face environments, addressing what people's tone and mood are is really important in these times. So this is a really nice best practice to kind of start off and do a check-in with your team, even if you're doing this with adults. So it, it works out really good. And I'm waiting. There we go. And you guys can see you're jumping in there. Uh, I learned something about math. Closer connection to some of my students. Mario, we were talking about that earlier. Some kids are coming out of the woodwork. I love the time to dive into the deeper tools, learning something new every day. Raise your hand if you're learning something new every day, even if you don't want to. <laughs> right? so that is part, that's part of what we're doing right now. For the teachers on this, that's neat is I can click here and I can if you guys want to like them, if you like, if you want to heart some of those, I can actually sort them by the ones that are getting the most likes, or I can sort them by student name. So that's the collaborate board in Nearpod, and I think that's a really 
fun way to kind of just get into everybody's heads. So Lori, I agree. Um, people aren't doing referrals right now. Nobody's doing detention. Uh, there's no band practice after school. There's no sports. We do have some bandwidth right now to do some new things in education. So that was my quick demo of the uh, Collaborate tool, which is again, a good pedagogical practice. And what we're gonna be talking about here uh, tonight is like I said earlier, teach better, work less, which I think teachers can get into this. Um, I'm gonna try to use all my little tools right now. So here's one of my drawing tools. If you take this, if you look at this chart right here, this is reading math and science scores in the United States since 1970. Uh, Barbara Nemco, can you tell me what the pattern is of growth? How's our growth since 1970? Uh, really high, I think. <laughs> the line. This I'm, line. I'm also that's not the one. I'm monitoring the Napa Valley Unified Board meeting because we have oh. a presentation. So never I'm, mind. I'm Pamela, I'm switching to Pamela. You keep processing, Pam. I mean, uh, Barbara. Pam, what's our generalized pattern here since 1970? Uh, it looks exponential to me. <laughs> <laughs> exponentially zero. This is reading math and science down in here. This is the United States versus the United States. So this is not our scores compared to Finland or Sweden. This line right here is actually the total cost of education. So uh -huh. education's cost is going up. Reading math and science scores on NAEP. So this is the National Ass Assessment on Educational Progress. Us versus us as a nation, our results have been flat since yeah. 1970. Now, so just for some perspective, I'm 55 years old. In 1970, I was in first grade. As a profession, we have not gotten better. So think about it this way. If we were still making the cars of 1970 right now and nothing had gotten better, right? No, um, no uh, automatic windows, uh, not such a good air conditioning, no serious satellite, no Bluetooth, no heated seats, we're just driving the same car from the 1970s. So as a profession, we're not moving ahead like we have in other areas. Looks now like this is the going down. Yeah. So this is the teacher in um, down uh, in, in um, the Valverde uh, School District, Barb. I think you know where that is. And um, this is a 2018 scores versus 2019. So it's the same exact kids, the same exact kids. 2018 and 2019 okay same exact kids in 2018 this group of kids was 16 percent passing on casp in 2019 they were 55 percent passing what do you guys think of those results pretty pretty staggering uh, that's that's more than quadruple right that's more than quadruple the teacher that got these was using edge protocols and qcraft and she um was a mid-year higher she took over the class in December. She was a first year teacher with, still has not to this day finished her credential. And she's using the, some of the techniques that I'm gonna show you guys. And then what's really fun to see is that she did the same thing in math, you guys. Her math scores, which, and now I'm gonna be honest, 16% is not a super high score to write home about in math, right? But, but, Compare that to 3% the year before. Again, she did more than quadruple the result. And she took the um, nearly met from 37% to 58%. Now, Mario, if you were a classroom teacher, which class would you want coming to you next year? <laughs> right? Bear in mind, I don't know if you guys noticed this. This was actually a resource class. This was a resource-based class. Wow. Her class outpaced the other classes which had gate students. So that to me is pretty impressive. She's using the techniques I'm gonna show you guys in a few minutes. This is Scott Noons down in the Modesto area. Their English department, oh, by the way, I gotta say one more thing. Number of days of PD this girl got as a young teacher, first year, zero. She just figured this out from reading the book. So her, her that was just figuring things out. Scott Noons uh, down in Modesto, they did a cool thing too. Their department went up 41 points, the department went up 41 points in ELA. And I know you'll love this, Barb. Their students with disabilities went up 50 points. Their students with disabilities went more than the regular students. And their minorities and socioeconomic disadvantage went up a ton too. And here's something you will hardly ever see a teacher say. 
I cannot wait to see next year's scores. When's the last time you heard somebody say that? That's probably the best statement in the whole thing. This group of teachers used a bunch of the edge of protocols uh, to move their whole department better and check it out, you guys. They just did this from following chats on Twitter. So no days of PD, no district support. They didn't even buy the book, which frankly, I don't care if people buy the book. They figured this out on their own. I think that's pretty impressive. Here's another teacher in the Ripon area. He took his AP geography class from 49% passing was the state average. His last year was 80%. When is the last time you've seen 80% passing on AP? That's not a very common outcome either. And this guy, Robert, he says, uh, this book has changed my life. But the, the part I really like here is student-centered teaching, less time planning, more time with my family, more shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder time with students, and one of the most thing, fun things to watch, skill development via reps. So I'm just trying to build a case for you guys about this, uh, and then we'll get into some of the practice here in a second. Adam Moeller in Cincinnati, his class was so efficient that he picked up three weeks of instructional time. Now I'm not a super good math guy because I'm a language arts teacher, but if you have 32 weeks of class, he picked up almost 10% more school year without working more on the weekends. So those are some of the ways that people get these things done. And I referenced this earlier. Michael Fullan, I got to hear him say this at Lead 3 in um, Redondo Beach. Barbara, I think you might have been there. Um, he said these words, right now in education, our pedagogy is not strong. And what he meant by that was that teachers are overly dependent on textbooks and teaching straight from the textbook. And Sunny Magana, who's a Marzano level researcher says this, he says that, um, that when he visits classrooms over and over again, what he sees is the lecture and practice model. So I'm gonna tell you things and then give you a worksheet. So this is what we like to do in edge protocols. If you take this side of the drawing here, if you take this side of the drawing right here, this is what you're gonna get in a lot of classrooms. And this is what I got as a student, remember all the way back to 1970. The teacher's gonna lecture to me, I'm going to get uh, the end of the chapter questions or a worksheet, and then the teacher will put that work in a box somewhere, and I might see it three to 11 days later. So I'm not really getting feedback at that point. In the protocols model, we take this approach, and we like this idea. It's not, it's a remix, it's not a rebuild. It's the same stuff we already know how to do, but we start with some work. We give that feedback right away. We get into direct instructions, and then we do the work again to really build that mastery piece. And these are the techniques that, we're, that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys in about one more slide. In fact, this slide starts it. So I've seen a lot of teachers use this technique uh, very, very effectively. And what I've seen a lot of other teachers do is this. They do their normal vocabulary work and then they add a tool to it like Kahoot or Quizlet or something like that. I'm gonna show you guys a way that you can get rid of all of the lecture and get rid of the worksheets and the crosswords. And it's the technique that we call is the fast and the curious. So this is our first little quiz we're gonna do. And I'm gonna give you guys a quiz on BMX bikes from the 1970s. So I'm sure that people have a lot of skills in this area and that they're gonna do a great job. So on your screens, what you wanna do now is pick a character. And Mario, I'm gonna be gone for like two seconds. I'll be right back. That's fine. And I'm back. I see all of our people jumping in there. And I got five connected out of 16. And now you guys, Mario's only given me 25 minutes. So I'm not gonna go as slowly as I might with kids. But the whole idea is here to share what the model looks like. So we got eight connected. I'm gonna to count to five and then I'm gonna hit start. And you guys are gonna be doing a quiz on famous brands of BMX bikes from the 1970s. I will not have given you any direct instruction. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit start now. And you're gonna do a little race against each other. Here we go. Dude, I totally got it right. Look at that. <laughs> it's very possible. <laughs> Ooh. 
we have a few climbers and a few people who are not climbing so much. So I'm making a note of that. Some of the students are having trouble accessing the academic content. Three out of four questions answered. Good job, J-O-N. I wasn't even playing. So here's what makes this a fast and curious model. I gave you the quiz, but you guys were not necessarily cognitively loaded up, right? So I hadn't given you any direct instruction. So now that you've had the quiz, let me give you a little direct instruction. Mario, what color was the DG bike? Oh, geez. The DG it was blue and yellow. So everybody make a note. When you see the blue and yellow bike, it is what brand, Mario? DG. Was that the first okay. one? It might have been the first one, that's, yes. That's probably why I don't remember. That was... That I'm was going to give you guys that. two other hints. I'm going to give you two other hints. The JMC bike, the logo that says JMC is up in the left-hand corner, and the number plate says number 83. The uh, other bike that I'm thinking of is the Panda. The Panda was featured on the cover of BMX Action Magazine in 1978. Only one of these answers is from BMX Action Magazine, and that's the Panda. And it actually says Panda on the cover. So if you're good readers, our scores should go way up. So I'm going to launch you guys back into the quiz, and we're going to just play it twice. Now, some of you might be saying, John, why am I taking tests on 1970s BMX bikes? And when I'm going to make that harder, Mario, I'm going to randomize them this time. Uh oh um the reason i'm doing bmx bikes is unless you woke up this morning knowing what wow. bmx bikes are i'm going to take you guys from here to here in just a few minutes without a bunch of lecture if that makes sense if i can do this with bmx bikes i can also do this with things like earthquakes and glaciers and complementary angles i can do this all kinds of ways and John Southam, yeah, it is not a common way to spell it. John, a question for you. Do, you. do you get called Joe a lot? I get called Joe a lot. I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> okay, let's see this. Let's see if we can get 100%. DG, don't say it out loud, Mario. DG is? I talked about DG. There was something special about DG that was colors. Ooh, yeah, lots of people moving up. Lots of people moving up. Which is the SE. Well, if it's not the JMC and it's not the DG and it's not the Panda, it's got to be an SE. Okay, five seconds. We're going to go on to the next one. And here we go. Next one. By the way, I can set the timer on this, Mario, so I can give the kids as much as time as I want. The nice. Panda is a very famous BMX bike. I, I, I totally messed mine up, but <laughs> I, I, I accidentally refreshed. And he says, no excuses, Mario. No excuses. <laughs> this is high stakes testing. <laughs> there will be accountability. Oh, 
Oh, John just decided not to play because yeah, he's been, he's been chatting with me and he's just he's been distracted. <laughs> he already showed us that he knows his bikes. Well, he did dominate last time, to be sure. Not a hundred percent. So the JMC, this should be an easy one to take us home. Laura Zinser is on fire right now at number seven. Seven seconds to go. So the idea of this is give the kids a quiz, coach them up a little bit, give them the quiz again. Scores will go up a lot. When we do this in quizzes or Quizlet or other, other tools, we'll see 30 or 40 points growth in literally um, one class period, which is a really good number. Very nice, very nice. The high score is way higher. So that is time to climb. Uh, these little techniques with the Edger Protocols, my co-author Marlena, she likes to say, they're kind of like um, a grilled cheese. I can teach you how to make it in a few minutes, but you can work on it for your whole lifetime. That's kind of the, uh, the thing I like about teaching is it's like an unsolvable puzzle. And Rose, yes, Time to Climb is built right into Nearpod, correct, exactly. And so a couple more facts, and I'm, I'm not going to read all this, but the idea of Edger Protocols is really the genesis of it is lessons that you can use 10 or 12 times, maybe once a week all year long, over and over again, so your creation time is going down. The, low, the cognitive load on kids is lower because they know what the work is. You spend a lot of time talking about the content now instead of what am I doing today? And they span grade levels and grade ranges, which makes them really useful. Now we're going to do another fun one called Sketch and Tell. So sketch and tell basically goes like this. I'm going to show you guys a thing, and then you're going to write about it. So if anybody has ever seen FET, uh, P-H-E-T, this is from the University of Colorado. I'm going to make a light bulb here in this other window. So I'm going to take this little dude right here. I'm going to take a battery. It's a Duracell. I'm going to take a wire, and then I'm going to make the battery and the light bulb and the wire do that. So this is a really cool tool. It's totally free. And if you look in the bottom corner here, FET, P-H-E-T, really, really cool stuff. But a lot of times teachers are like, well, John, that's cool, but how do I give kids a test on this? What's the activity? Well, that's where the draw it model comes in in, um, in uh, Nearpod. So you guys are all now going to draw what I just made. Now, ideally, I would have let you make them uh, first, but draw, just draw a little battery, couple wires, make your light bulb come on. And if you look at my sp screen compared to yours, I can actually see what you guys are drawing as you start progressing. What are you doing? Okay. Betsy, yours is looking great. I love it. Scott, you got, you're almost there, Scott. You're looking good. Lori, that is a very nice battery. I like your battery a lot. Scott, you're looking good. Scott, if you want bonus points, go ahead and give me um, your plus and minus symbols. Which ends, there you go. Nicely done, Scott. Rose, that is one great light bulb. I'm not sure that I see the battery in the wire yet, though. So make sure that you, uh, make sure you highlight that. And Betsy, I didn't ha even have to ask Betsy. Betsy just went ahead and put a plus minus without me even saying a thing, which is pretty cool. Rafa, looking good. Carolyn? Uh, we're working on it. It's getting there. Oh, there, Rose, you have a light bulb. You got a LOL. I like it. Rose has figured out all the colors, which is pretty cool. Mario, yours is very technical. Very technical. So what's cool about this, you guys, is that um, in 14 seconds now, what you're seeing on my screen is what the whole class is doing. And what you're going to see on your screens in a second is you'll, you'll be able to see everybody else's. And when you, when you do it at first, you just see your own. So two seconds, one second, and then here we go and they all go out. Um, I know that Barbara is busy on her um, board call, but can you imagine the potential of this in a primary classroom, Mario? Just being able to gather that data immediately. Absolutely, very quick. And then I'm, I'm not gonna do this right now like I did in, in uh, Time to Climb, but if, if I did this, I could literally go back, and if I had kids that had struggled with this, I could just literally go forward that quickly, and I have a fresh board, and I can say, okay, when we draw it this time, Let's label the plus and minus right from the beginning. So that's one of those cool uh, pivots there. Um, then my favorite one here is Math Reps, invented by a teacher down in King City. So basically, Math Reps goes like this. And Mario, just for time purposes, this is our last activity. So we're, we're getting close to wrapping up. Sounds good. So this is, this is for a primary classroom setup. 
there's there's math reps that go all the way through 12th grade but imagine that every day the kids do basically they do the same work every day but what changes is they just change the number so today's number would be two and I would check these in and I would color this and color this and I would put one, two and I would put one plus one equals two and I would do all these activities. This is really cool. Well, if that's on paper, I would have to wait until I see the kids or have them turn it in to collect it. So what if I did this? What if a lightning bolt hit, boom, and it blew up my math rep and we're gonna do math reps, one math rep element at a time with Mr. Pikachu for today. So today's number is 46, Mario. Today's number is 46. And what I did was I took these slides from my friend Amanda Sandoval. And if you'll notice, it even says Pear Deck at the bottom because this concept is not a brand thing. This is a pedagogical approach. So today's number is 46. I want everybody to color in their 100 chart to what number today, Mario? 46. 46 is our number. And Mario, you're doing such a good job. I'll let you pick the number for tomorrow night's homework. Yes. And then if anybody's wondering, I'm going to hit hide student names. I can protect their individuality and privacy on the fly. And I see, oh, I like seeing the names actually. Carolyn, you're off to a good start there. Look at Betsy, you guys. Very efficient. Very efficient, Betsy, except we're only at 30. We got to get up to 46. You like that? Uh, Scott said he likes Pear Deck being used in Nearpod. Yeah, I'm a cannibal. I'll, I'll co-mix it all together. Julie, great coloring. I love it. Great color selection. Betsy looking good. Carolyn, Carolyn is very meticulous. She is going to dot all 46 squares. Very meticulous. And, and for just for the, our purposes of tonight, you guys, don't, be, don't worry about being right or wrong. Yeah, Rafa, nice job. Just color that thing in, bro. Lovely. So I'm gonna go ahead and go on to the next one, but hopefully you guys can see the potential of this because now I can collect information from all the kids in real time. And then I can also zoom in on some to bring uh, attention. Like Julie, this is very nice, Julie. I like your coloring. Betsy, submitted, very nice. Rafa, getting there, using multiple colors. I love it. So I'm gonna go on to the next activity in this. And now we're gonna help Mr. Pikachu do a different thing, which is, we are going to put the number of the day in the middle, you guys. And what's the number of the day, Mario? 46. We're going to go plus 10 going up, minus 10 going down, minus 1 going left, and plus 1 going right. And Mario, just because I know you're wondering, can teachers do this asynchronously too? Yes. There's a way you can set these up so that it can be student paced. So in a blended learning model, imagine this. The kids get a link in the morning and you just say, I need you guys to knock this out by sometime tonight. You don't necessarily have to be in the lesson leading it with them. Guess what else? I'm going to do the exact same Mr. Pikachu slides tomorrow. What's the only thing that changes, Mario? Uh, the number. So what's my prep time, Mario? That'd be zero. Zero. Zero prep time. I love and it. then the kids that get it will get faster and the kids that don't get it will start getting it. So that's an example of math reps paired up with either Pear Deck or um, Nearpod, just to give you guys an idea. And if you like this idea, there's, you can go to q.org slash craft and get a bunch of these uh, free protocols there, pre-templated up, ready to go. And then there's more at eduprotocols.com. And we've got about 20 out there that people can grab for free, eduprotocols.com. And then one more thing, because I like to do my Steve Jobs impersonation. One more thing. If you're looking at starting up your school year this way, we actually have a full lesson built for um, Smart Start so that the first two, three, four days of school are really focused on activities that really um, de-academic pressure this part. And we're really focusing on the fun of learning. So we're doing like a Venn diagrams on cats versus dogs. We're doing Venn diagrams on Whoppers versus Big Macs so that when week two shows up, the kids already know how to do a Venn diagram. I just start dropping in the academics, right? So that's the idea of Smart Start. Plus I get to know the kids that first week. So it's really, really cool. So that's my contact info. And that's my Twitter handle. And uh, my second free gift tonight is every uh, time I do PD, it comes with, you guessed it, 
free tech support for life. Now I'm going to click on reports right here and it's going to send that report to my email. And Mario, I'm going to, if you want to start asking questions and chatting, and then when this email shows up, I'll screen share it. It's pretty cool. Sounds good. So if you guys want to send us a chat of your question, or if you raise your hand, I'll, I'll let you in to actually use audio to ask John yourself. Yeah, and there's the, you've got the Q&A feature turned on too. I do have Q&A as well. I bet, I bet Scott would love to jump in here. So I'm gonna stop that share and start a new one, Mario, just to let people while we're transitioning see what kind of report I'm gonna get on every student because this is really, really cool. What was my build time since we shut this activity down? I can see who did what, it saves all their drawings. This is in a PDF format. I get that live data coming in. When you match this data collection up with the Edu Protocol's mindset of not having to build a new slide deck every day, it's it's really cool. It's really cool. And I could have done more stuff along the lines there that would be data centric, but I thought that you guys would like that. And then of course I will say, I will share the slides right now in the chat as well because I love sharing. That's awesome. Does anyone have a, a question for John about Nearpod and the tools that he's using in here? Let's see. Go ahead, Scott. Can you guys hear me or not? I hear you. We can. Oh, okay. Do you want to be seen too? Do you want me to promote you? Yeah, to yeah. Uh, um, promote that man. Let's see. The yes, last week us. or so. There we go. Oh. Why don't I have, I don't have video. That's weird. Okay. I'll start my video. Oh, there we go. Hey, Scott. Hey. You're in a so, green screen. I do have a green screen. Um, so um, I've been using Pear Deck and I haven't even tried out Nearpod and um, they seem kind of similar. I would say they're roughly analogous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm using uh, iCivics. I don't know if you're familiar with iCivics uh -huh. for a teach government. So my like uh, my edu protocol is they play an iCivics game, they hook them into, into the topic, they write a little reflection with that, then I give them a pair deck to reinforce the content, okay, interactive. Then they do quiz is, and they do multiple uh -huh. reps of that until they get. 100%. I love the layers. Yeah. yeah, that's money. And then they screenshot a hundred percent and turn that in. And the last part is like enrichment. I don't really have like a final. Uh, presentation for them to do because I want to keep it low key, but it's like have a guest speaker, uh, watch a, watch a webinar from the Constitution Center or something like that. So, I've kind of been inspired by your ED protocols to kind of make my own for government right now. Well, and I'm super happy because uh, let people know what's your workload it like in this model. Yeah, so I'm teaching the same stuff. Um, I have to create things that I haven't done before. So that's taking longer, but it's basically the same format every week. And that's my right. idea for distance learning right now. Cause we're in an emergency teaching situation. We yeah. want to and keep that's it smart really. Cause that lowers that cognitive load. The work's the yeah. same. It's just a different question. Right. And I assign it on Sunday and Monday and it's due Friday every week. So like yeah. they can Boom. do it asynchronously. Boom. But then when I see them in class, I can also jump in and do a quizzes live, or I could do the Pear Deck live if I wanted to. So they can do it both ways, which I think is important. So yeah, we have a I question agree. about how much Pear Deck costs for people that are interested. And I know that Nearpod has a free version. And of course, there are limitations. And I'm pretty sure that they're, I'm looking it up right now through the- Pear Deck is giving premium access uh, through the end of June, I think. Yeah. So normally, so normally premium is 149 a year on Pear Deck, but there's a free, completely free level too. And one of the things that I love in Pear Deck, have you seen the flashcard factory, Scott? That is just a party right there. No, I haven't. Uh, I'm using okay, the, so, so, I'm using the social emotional learning slides and other, other kinds of things they have. Okay. So uh, flashcard factory, remember Lucille Ball? Yeah, your your this. card is going by, and the kids have to put in the definition before their card goes off the end. It's super engaging. The kids are typing as fast as they can, and then you approve their definition. Julie, were you waving at that? Have you used the flashcard factory, or were you just getting our attention? 
No, I'm sorry. I was I was reaching for the camera and I also <laughs> wanted no, I just wanted to chime in that I'm loving everything that I'm seeing. So I'm seeing the Nearpod and the Pear Deck and these are all you talked about near one of these being at a free level. Of course They're both free right now, yeah. Right now. So does that mean that when school starts again then we have to pay for it? The difference is right now you get the free premium one and oh. and they normally have a free one as well. Oh, okay. So, okay, and, and I know what I wanted to ask is that in one of the other, in one of the other, I think it's Quizlet, the quizzes are already made and then it's a matter of picking and choosing based on, let's say, for example, um, California symbols and then I can just pick what I want and then it puts it together. Is, the, is that same um, uh, structure available in Pear Deck and Nearpod where things are already created and we can just pull from it? And, I will share and, my screen and, sh and show you while Scott describes it. How does that sound? Okay. Oh, okay. Scott, how, you, you do Pear Deck and I'll do Nearpod. Yeah, so um, like for quizzes and stuff, um, if you're talking about like Quizlet, um, I'm more familiar with Quizzes and there's literally thousands of quizzes in there. And oh, I steal actually over 7 million now. Over it's 7 crazy. million. So I steal questions all the time. In fact, I did that like today. I just made one today and then I tweak it a little. But um, so that's where I get questions from. Okay. And Pear Deck, it just, it just is basically based off your Google Slides. So if you already have Google Slides made, it's really easy mm -hmm. to create the interactivity in Pear Deck. Um, if you're like me and you don't have a whole lot of slides made, I have to actually make slides, um, which I haven't done in a long time. Like okay. slide lecture. So that takes some so time. Julie Julie, I'm sharing my screen right now of all the stuff going on in Pear Deck. I mean, in Nearpod that's already made. Yeah. Okay. It's already made. So when they talk about $149, a lot of teachers are like, oh, that's a lot. The district isn't paying. I'm not paying. What is 10 weekends worth? Is it worth $149? Because to, yeah. <laughs> yes. to me it is. So look yeah. at, if you look on screen here, they've got virtual recess. They've got music, art lessons, ELA for virtual learning. They've got top math, top ELA. They've got math facts. So wow. even if my district didn't pay, yeah, 149, 14 bucks a month, that's which like, is about what I'm like paying for my pay iTunes. Teachers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's cheaper than teachers. For you. That's a great way to put it. So yeah. I'm just clicking through some of the lessons, and they're look at it's all built out. Preparing I don't know this. if Pear Deck has anything that extensive, like. So it's, already made for you Maybe and then i just click too. add to my library and it's good but i'm gonna have a totally different answer for you which is closer to what scott said so watch this scott you for you said i don't have a lot of uh, watch this i can go like this i can go new lesson ready lesson okay. in nearpod i'm doing this in real time you guys ready so scott let's say you had something you wanted kids to draw ready yeah add slide right add activity guess which i'm gonna pick draw what you're already trained julie <laughs> i now have a yeah. one slide presentation where kids draw stuff that's all the time it takes right so and i'm going to be honest mm -hmm. with you guys i'm pretty good at tech i've been teching for a while when i first went in and i saw this i was like oh i don't got time for this right now i i don't, I don't got time for this laura, but I laura got zinzer in the laura zinzer in the comments says she's using nearpod uh to host a virtual field trip to pompeii next week yeah there's stuff already there built so once again, uh, Julie, just for you, I go create. Okay. Listen in Nearpod. And all I've got to do is go like this. Add slide, right? Yes. What, what do I want to do? The, uh, where we want to do activity. an activity. activity. Look at the activities. Open-ended question. Matching yes. pair. Quiz. I can launch and run a flip grid in Nearpod. Whoa. I can have a draw it. You guys did a collaborate. You can do a poll, a fill in the blanks, the memory test. And how many slides did I have to make, Scott? Uh, you haven't made any slides. Maybe you made yeah. once. They made the yeah. slide. I could make like a two or three slide Google slide deck, suck it into here. Because again, I'm going to show you because I love my reps, right? Reps for the game. So I'm going to go like this. Ready? Click. Now what I'm going to do, click lesson in Google Slides. So Julie, mm. I'm guessing you're pretty good at Google Slides. I can give the kids like three slides, draw what I showed you, get cracking. So it's, it doesn't have to be a heavy lift. Right. Wow. So this can, to me looks more- You can go more, as crazy as you want wow. to. This wow. looks more robust than Pear Deck, at least 
I'm just new to Pear Deck, but it looks like there's more already built for you in Nearpod. But Pear Deck maybe is built for the younger kids. You know, I'm not I'm not could sure. Be. I could yeah, I could, could show be. you what that looks like, but it, it has and some really before cool. I shut my screen down, you'll love this. Julie, what grade do you oh. teach? Fourth. Fourth. Okay, so this is the the flashcard factory that Pear Deck has, and Nearpod oh. has nothing like this. So basically the each team of kids gets a word and then the word falls out and it goes down the little conveyor belt here and they have to their team has to type in the correct definition and get it approved by you or it falls into the trash <laughs> i'm gonna do this in economics i guarantee you this will work right. high school kids I, <laughs> this would, I mean I this would be this so work. fabulous when it comes to our units on on geometry and and you know they have to be able to talk about the attributes of shapes and so on and so forth i could yeah. see this and so this is it. almost a sketch and tell here right because on one side one kid's got to draw the thing and the other kid's got to type the thing and yeah. then the boss says looks good ship it and approves it and these are going by in real time and it's got to go to quality control so it's really gamifying the good old concept of note taking and look at this i'm a zebra because of my chromosomes that's crazy creative right yeah. So that that's that's a big deal, and so um, it, it's it's really goofy fun. But that's Pear Deck only. So each of these tools has its own um, specific benefits. I like the Pear Deck flashcards, and I like the Nearpod ability to to call um, an activity together like that lickety split. Yeah. And I like the prices, so that even if yeah. it's not being paid for, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. Saving yeah. time, the convenience of time. I, I love Scott's example. Teachers pay teachers, right? If you're doing three teachers pay teachers a month, you could do that or have a Nearpod. Uh, That's not true. even close, bro. <laughs> not yeah. even close. And then Barb uh, Nemco, what I've seen is I've seen examples in here where it's got like 30 letters and it says circle the bees and they're uppercase and lowercase. And the next one says circle the C's. But instead of the teacher doing at a felt board, and John and, and young Scott going, yeah, Barbara, we understand who's doing the work. The kids, obviously. And the accountability is kid by kid. So there's tons of those activities already built in. And I think it's, it's awesome for primary, but Scott's sitting here licking his chops and he teaches high school civics. And he's like, oh, this is yeah. because engagement and drawing and building and saying what you think turns out to be a very human activity. Yeah. I think, John, this is going to be the, the silver lining in this yes. whole pandemic for education. Mm -hmm. So many so, teachers who never used these tools before mm -hmm. are going to mm -hmm. be, they'll ha they have to use them now. And so you have to learn them now. And then yep. they see how powerful they are. And I believe even when someday, whenever that is, we go back to what we used to think of as school, they will still use these tools. Yeah, because it will become part of how and you know, they it's it's sort of like there's a base though, and the base in our district, John, is everyone has to use either Seesaw or Google Classroom. Seesaw for K two, right? I think Google Classroom higher. So yes. there's the teachers at the first stage learning one of those two platforms, right? And then you build on top of that. Once you once they've learned that, then they want to do more with that. Right. Yeah. And well, I always like to use the restaurant model. All of us have had somebody drag <laughs> you into a restaurant you didn't want to go to. Right. So you're like, I'm not feeling Thai right now. Right. I don't know. And they drag you in there. And by the time the appetizers are done, you're like, when are we coming back? And that's what we need to do to each other as educators. We need to no, drag, we need to drag them into our favorite restaurant and say, eat this. It's good. And, um, and I agree with what Barb and Julie are saying. I believe there will be a relapse when people go back. There's going to be a bunch of teachers that say, oh, God, I can just lecture now and give them worksheets. It's going to be great. However, I think there will be another group uh, that will say, you know how to do this. What, what's going on there? So my personal wish is I, th I feel like Q represents about 5% of the teachers that get the pedagogy and technology interface. Does that yes. make sense? Yes. Because there's an interface there. It's not geeks for geeks. It's I, when I do this, kids learn better, right? So that piece. 
And my fondest wish right now is that if we can come out of this in September, I hope September um, or November, whenever that is, that if that could be 10% of teachers, it's still twice as many. And to Andy's point, kids are going to look at worksheets after doing stuff like this and be like, bro, you got to be kidding me right now. So John, like when, when we come back in the fall, it's not going to be just normal school again. It'll be blended learning. Yes. It'll totally yeah. be, there'll be distance learning. Even if we come back in September for any element of physical, you're still going to have big time blended. I, I agree with that. You're going to, and you're going to have dis, you're going to have that social separation too. And maybe like half the kids coming one day, half the kids coming another day. We don't, we don't know what that's going to look like yet, but no. we know blended and, and, learning is going to be key. There's a bunch of charter schools that are on this model already. It's called hybrid where one fifth of the kids comes in one day of the week. Oh, they're already doing hybrid people that teach in a, in a brick and mortar school are like, what? That's crazy. So imagine Julie that one fifth of your class came in every day. Yeah. 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 And, and there, there's ways they, to do this. I, I think that, I think that when parents um, talk about what they're worried about, it, at least based on Facebook, the Facebook interactions that I've had of the American Canyon parents that I have Facebook interactions with, they've shared how they like when their kids are engaged with us teachers and when they have their must do's and may do's. But then all the rest of the time, the parents seem to like not know what to do with their kids and mm -hmm. because they're busy still working from home. Right. And so if we're figuring out one fifth of the kids are coming in, then the other four fifths are still maybe working on Pear Deck or Nearpod or somebody mentioned right. EduPuzzle or something like that. Then mm -hmm. and it'd be interesting to find out what else can happen because we all know we cannot just have kids in front of the screen, you right. know, for, for seven hours. That it's not no. good. You might be able to pull that off for a week, but you ain't going to be able to pull that off for a month, right? Well, I think yeah. until now, there's been so much concern about kids not using screens. And right. parents who are home with their kids all day, I look at my daughter who is very anti-screen. And now, if they're busy <laughs> and they're doing something, she doesn't even want to see what's on the screen. Yeah. So I, I think <laughs> yeah. it's going to change in terms of parents seeing their kids really engaged and not mm -hmm. being quite so anti-screen because it is engaging it is interactive and kids are learning and yeah well this is one that you'll love barb uh we shared with mike mccormick school district I, you know they're worried about their seniors their seniors what that year is going to look like is different and i said you know what i'm not an expert on seniors in high school but We've always talked about this guilt trip that we have as adults that kids leave high school and they really don't know how to navigate adulthood, like hashtag adulting, right? right. And so if, if you guys want to open up a new tab right now, just, just, just Google adulting classes. And that is a thing. Yeah, that is a thing. Yeah. It's a thing. New York Public Library does adulting classes. We've just wow. been ignoring it in education. Okay. So one of the things I pitched to them was imagine this, Scott, every teacher makes a top 10 list of something they failed at as a young adult. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Top 10 things about doing your laundry. Well, top 10 things <laughs> about, top 10 <laughs> things about your leaving your first apartment. That's going to have a lot more than 10 on his list. Top 10 <laughs> things about buying a used car that I would like young people to know. Right. Yeah. So yeah. imagine a high school staff, all making 10 slides about things they want young people to know. Oh my gosh, Sean, you're bringing young back people, memories. Young people can choose whichever ones they want, and then they're gonna complete a task. And we're gonna train teachers how to have choice boards, Barb, because it'll look like this. Kids can answer the five questions by interviewing their parents in Flipgrid. Kids can answer the questions by making a slide deck. Kids can answer the questions by writing an essay. Kids can answer the questions by making a short video. But here's the questions you need to answer to get full credit in the class. Done. Done. And then you just tell the kids, I'm going to be in my adulting class Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 11 to 11.30 if you want the real life thing. If you can't stand me, the recording is going to go out at one. <laughs> and 
they can get 50 points that they can apply to all their classes because frankly, right now, electives is a weird bag. Teaching math and science and English, that's a, less of a mess than teaching ag. How are you teaching ag right now? Or drama, the drama Leadership. teacher, the choir teacher. You know, uh, I can see things with band, but electives are hard right ceramics, now. Ceramics, you know? Ceramics, like, yeah. yeah I mean, like You can only do so many PowerPoints on ceramics theory. Like, there's a point where that wears out. Um, but <laughs> I think just opening our minds to the possibilities instead of saying, here's what we don't have, right? Here's what we don't have. Here's what we could do. Now, uh, Rose, uh, question from Rose. I want our kids to have access to Google Jamboard. Why would they not have access to Google Jamboard? Does anybody have any feed on that? What is Google Jamboard? All uh, right, you had to ask the question. I, I, I'm, I'm doing a, a prediction. Is that like a whiteboard? Where yep. people oh, good job, go Julie. Jam? Yeah, the only thing I'm not super in love with Jamboard is I don't really want kids just whiteboarding all day. But um, for certain things, there's better tools. Have you guys seen what goes on in Desmos? Can I show you one? Can I show you a Desmos real quick? Have you guys looked at Desmos? I know that uh, Julie I thought and I Rafa. Knew Desmos. Uh, I thought I knew Desmos. I did not know. The I math teachers know Desmos. John, okay, John is saying Desmos, yeah. Yeah, so watch this. I'm going to do this. I just bumped into this lesson uh, today in Desmos. I was doing a little research. Let me show you how this works. This, uh, and Barbara Nemco, if this doesn't get me free wine by UPS, I don't know what will. Okay, so this <laughs> is the motor. Well, John, I love hey, it. Hey, she gives you chocolate too sometimes. If oh, she, she really she likes gives it. You already been ordered, John. Don't okay. worry. <laughs> Woo! This is not what I want to show you. Hold on. They have these pre-built lessons that are amazing. This is, oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is right there. I didn't realize what was happening here at first, but it is crazy, you guys. So, oh, sorry, wrong link. I got to go back one. Just bear with me. This is worth it. Is Desmos um, math based? Yes, but you okay. can do a lot of things in Desmos. It also turns out, uh, Julie, if you teach a self contaminated classroom like Terry <laughs> Williamson, that. Um, Desmos is actually the back end engine for the CASP test. Don't you think kids should be working in the real thing? Uh, yes. I'm gonna go with yes. Yes. <laughs> so check this out. I can crank up a class and then the kids do this right here. Okay, so watch this. I'm gonna do ordering least to greatest. I do the next thing. Desmos is scoring my work for me. I'm gonna do the next thing. Watch this, which was easier to sort? Uh, list two. Why? Uh, because uh, smaller numbers. <laughs> if I'm in teacher mode right now, it's collecting all of my responses and I can watch them all coming in in real time on the teacher dashboard. Okay, so what do you think it means for the number to be written in scientific notation? I can put in an answer and then I can go to next. And now I can do things like this. Write this distance in scientific notation. and check my work. Can you believe this? Like, and th this is free, you guys. This costs nothing. So Andy is saying Jamboard is enabled in our, uh, in your domain. In our G Suite. So. so basically the kids go through and do this whole activity right here and the teacher, and I'm not logged in right now, but the teacher gets real life feedback on the fly. So basically all I've got to do is log in with my Google and then I can see their progress. Do you see the difference on correcting there, you guys? Is, is that make it, am I making the, am I making it clear enough? So I go create class code. You guys can jump into my class. How long does this take? Like it's too bad like my that. internet's slow. Like that. Yeah, create class code, view dashboard. This is the cool part right here. Check this out. This is nuts. I'm gonna make my screen bigger. So if you wanted to jump in, you could, but nobody should be doing math at nine o'clock on Thursday night. So, so look That's at this right. right here. I'm going to use my little highlighting tool um, to, to make sure that we have clarity. I'm going to use the heart stamp for Barb. Okay, so ready? Here we go. There's a warm up, another warm up, another warm up. 
we're now we're doing math. Now we're doing math. Now we're doing math. These, all this is built. I don't build that, right? I can pause their work. I can see what their pace is. And as the kids are coming in, I can see their scores on each box, you guys. So it's kind of like Desmos has their own, it's like Pear Deck or it's like Nearpod, but it's for math or science. It's, it's yeah. kind of similar. Yeah. In some ways. It's, it's the same. You still, you know, the key to me on any of these tools I'm going to use, I'm not going to use a tool without a dashboard, if that makes sense. I, I want right. a dashboard. Yes. If I don't yeah, have a dashboard, I, want, you know, I ain't using it. I need to be able to analyze what's happening with my kids. Yep. Yes. So it'll literally, I can go through and it'll show me the answer key. Let's, let's do one just for fun, Scott. Go to, um, go to this uh, link real quick. Hold on. Because it is- put me on the spot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't care if you have answers that are right or wrong. I just want you to throw in some data. We're all going to see if it's wrong though. Well, we'll know that. Yeah. So we're, no pressure. We're, we're no forget. pressure. So I'm going to go create class code. <laughs> Why does it just have so, to be Marston? Can it be like, uh, like a real teacher? Well, you've been like an oversharer, Julia. so it's it's your time. <laughs> oh, okay. So get ready here. Uh, okay, I'll join too, Scott. If you okay, want. that's okay. good. I want some other? Uh, we will blunt. We'll blunt the impact. So student.desmos.com. Okay. And then you I'm, put in. The I'm code. doing it on my phone. Is that okay? I don't care, bro. You're one of those cool teachers that lets their kid use their cell phone in class. Yeah. I'm sure it's That's, built for mobile. I figure yeah. if, if, if they use their cell phone, then I can use mine. It seems fair. Okay. So are you guys jumping in? Okay. Student.desmos.com. Okay. And the code stays up there in the top. Check this out. I got John and Mario. I'm going to see their work as they go, you guys. So John and Mario, don't worry about being right. Just throw some stuff in so we can see what it looks like on the dashboard. See, do you see John progressing right now? And I can then check what he's doing. I can check him in real time, you guys. It's crazy. Hmm. Oh, okay. So I can see John and Mario's responses now on question one. What was my correcting time, Julie? Yeah. <laughs> Correcting's nothing. for suckers. Correcting is for, is for right. suckers. Right, nothing. I mean, it's like nothing. And then, and then uh, now all I got to do is look, look at this right here, which was easier to sort. I'm getting the answers. Dude, why, why would I go to Teachers Pay Teachers and then score that crap by hand? This is free. Amen, amen. Uh, you've made a believer out of me. Very I just cool. found it today. I can't believe I haven't seen this at this level before. So I have to, I have to cut us off because we're going to have people dropping like flies here. You don't have to. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to at least give people some information before they. Mario's the man. He's taking our learning away. Mario's I'm going to, I'm going to at least give people some info and then we can, we can keep <laughs> chit chatting. So the, okay. the, the first at thing least is. Stop recording. I'm going to, I'm going to give you, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a little poll to fill out to rate the quality of today's session. One would be uh, needs improvement. You wasted my Thursday. Four would be awesome. I highly, uh, I feel highly prepared to teach in a distance learning environment. And um, if I wasted your Thursday, then I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, you, obvious, you obviously were, you know. Well, they clearly turned all the way meant off. to be at the Home Depot staff training and they got this instead, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love what and, you said about the godlike powers we now have been bestowed yeah. by. Well, that, by was, that was back to John Southam. You can pause them. I can stop everybody. You guys are wrecking my day. Can I please explain how we're supposed to do this? And then I can let you go again. We've been dreaming of that power since the first day I was a teacher. <laughs> yes. The mute that's button, awesome. too. Well, oh, the mute button's solid. Yeah, that's one of the big things teachers are going to miss when they come back. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give a second to pitch our upcoming session April 30th next week with Hall Davidson from Discovery Education. Barbara, do you wanna do you wanna give some insight into Hall's presentation? Hot guy alert. Uh, yeah, he's I think he's going to be talking about a whole bunch of free, fabulous resources that people can use right now. 
And I would like to challenge everybody who's here tonight, because this is the creme de la creme who came to tonight's session. Bring a friend next week. Let people know. And a lot of these resources will include social and emotional learning, which are really important for right now. Um, so be here. And then let's see who's coming after that. Who, the next two weeks, we have a, a fabulous lineup coming, Mario. We do. We have, we have, we have some pretty big names. I'm not gonna, not gonna, not gonna give it away just yet, but uh, we're Mario, really okay. Mario and Barbara, I have a, I have a complaint of activity and my Desmos uh, lesson has gone down since you guys started with your house. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm, al I'm also going to say that all of our resources can be accessed at napalearns.org slash distance learning. A recording of tonight's session will be up there. We have a recording of our first session on there as well, and as well as a bunch of other really great resources. Um, I want uh, Scott and Julie to talk a little bit about LearnShift and our teacher coaching program. Well, um, since I've been accused of oversharing, I think I'm gonna let Julie uh, handle it because I'm a little traumatized by that comment, actually. Uh-oh, right. I was trying to motivate you, Scott. <laughs> You are you are not able to be intimidated. Come on, jump in, buddy. Um, so uh, a group of teachers um, in Northern California, in this area, we got together when we went to distance learning to think how could we help and make a difference. And we had a background of going through the innovative uh, learning program at Toro University. And we decided we wanted to do something to help teachers. And so we kind of set up this learn shift uh, organization where we're going to provide one on one coaching to teachers and our sessions are at 330 um, Monday through uh, Thursday and every Friday we just have happy hour, which is not a formal session, but we just hang out and um, talk about the week that went by. So this is a chance for people to get like one on one coaching and there's usually a group of us in there. So you're getting tag teamed by a bunch of uh, great teachers like Julie um, Meyer Houston and Julie Lovey and Lisa Gottfried and um, Marie Zorn and just just some really innovative uh, teachers. There's a dozen of us so far and we'll be tapping the other 150 grads to join in. Yes. Awesome. And the first opportunity to tap into all this is tomorrow at 4 p.m. Bring bring your own booze, bring your own wine. It's gonna, it's gonna be a, an awesome time of networking and uh, being able to connect and decompress. And hopefully um, if, you, if you do bring a, a challenge for one of our ed techie teachers, I'm sure they'll, they'll offer a solution for you. So uh, join us uh, Friday, uh, four to 5 p.m. And uh, hopefully next week on Thursday uh, for Hall Davidson. And we'll continue to host these every Thursday until the foreseeable future here. Yay. Yay. Very exciting. And let me know if you guys need some people. I'll invite some of my friend group to jump in. I got a bunch of people that would love to do this with you guys. Yes, well, please. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. Yes, yes, please. please. We love it. Yeah, we kind of kept it small, John, to start with, but the, the goal is to expand something like this. But yeah. we're just we kind of make our mistakes small at first. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and to quote Julie, we know that if you're not failing, you're not learning. So that's yeah. right. That's right. Our, our motto is that's you know, right. There, <laughs> uh, hopefully, people forgive us when we make mistakes. Oh yeah. Love that. Yes. I love that. Johnny, you've just been a dream. I love your edge. I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about your edge protocol, and just based on what you shared about Pear Deck near. Nearpod and Flipgrid, Quizlet, Quizzes, Edupod, Edupuzzles, Desmos. I, I'm walking away with with my mind blown. Well, now, and I would say, feel free to just do one thing. Like, hey, don't John, try that yeah. all at once. John, I, I, I always I try to a, set a buffet, and not everybody likes tapioca, and that's okay. <laughs> but you don't want to take all the ribs either, because yeah. that may not end well for you. So, so you know, Julie, there's the. Buffet. There's the Edu Protocol website that has a lot of free resources on there, and then his two books, because uh, he came out with a part two, um, and I happen to own both of them, but I haven't got them autographed yet, so that's that's, that's in my uh, future. So, John, I had two more questions for you. Yes. The first is, where where did you come up with the idea for Edu Protocols? How did that how did that come oh. to be? That was the first question. Uh huh. The title or the concept. Just the concept. 
when uh, I was a full bore, hundred percent hair on fire, Harry Wong teacher, collecting seventeen hundred pieces of paper a week. That was me. And I was like, this this crap ain't gonna fly, bro. I can't do this for twenty four more years. This sucks. And then when I realized that half of the kids weren't even bringing the homework back, right. There you go. I'm like, what am I yes. doing? Yes. Right. So I quit doing homework and I start thinking about how can I be systematic? And Julie, I'm going to take you deep into the guts in a quick way right now. What grade do you teach again? Fourth. Okay. So if you're doing parts of speech, it does like this, a week of nouns followed by. No. And then we're going to go into verbs. Oh, and then, and then we're going to go into adjectives and then we're so going to go into half, adverbs and so on. Of so on. all eight parts of speech, how many weeks do you get of each part? Yeah, maybe, um, maybe you get one well, we per do, week. We, yeah, but we always do the. I'm sorry, I've got to say we're going. We do the spiral, the spiral. Don't limit. spiral. Spiral's wrong. <laughs> How do I know this? How do I know this? Every <laughs> district spirals. How does that look on your cast sco scores, Barbara? That's so Every good. district getting the same <laughs> results. <laughs> okay. Well, just based on what you shared with us, clearly the pedagogy is not right. Clearly. Yeah, it's wrong. So here's what I do. There's a, there's a, there's a, uh, the first edgy protocol, the great, great grandpappy is called eight parts. Guess why? We're going to do all eight parts of speech every day, Julie. Gotcha. And okay. they get slaughtered for the first three days, but I don't care because we're going to do it for four weeks. Okay, and then what I do is I take pictures like this. Hold on a second. I'm going to Google. I'm going to let you guys see what I'm Googling. Because this is fun. I, I love Googling this all the time. Okay, so here we go. Let's share. I'm going to just walk you through this, Julie. Here we go. Times it's okay to say the F word. <laughs> oh. and I'm slide over to images. Okay. Oh okay. my gosh. Okay. And I'm guess watching. what you get? <laughs> 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 this is a favorite. Oh, the elephant. oh my god. <laughs> Look at this guy right here. Times it's okay to say the F word. It's actually a channel on Flickr. That oh, is paint, Julie. Oh, Julie, that yeah. is paint. Wow. That is latex paint. Wow. So here's what I ask the kids to do. Ready? Just be my one of my kids. Give me three nouns, Julie. Oh, okay. Paint, floor, uh, bucket. Crap, I messed up. I need one proper now, Julie. Uh, um, Frank. Okay, good. Or you could say Sony. The okay. TV oh. got blitzed too. All right. Give me three adjectives that go with the nouns. <laughs> White, wet, messy. See how we're doing this? Oh, okay. I'm loving it. Now give me John, three verbs. You just had, I'm having <laughs> Give me three verbs, Julie. Give me three <laughs> verbs. Give me three verbs. Slide, cry. And mm -hmm. um, now give me some adverbs that go with them. Oh my gosh, scared, laughing. And, okay, give me a simile. Give me a oh simile. Oh my goodness. Um my mom is as is going to be as mad as a wet hen. Bang. So we do this every day, but every day what happens is we pick new pictures. Oh. Every oh day God. we pick new pictures. That was not particularly funny. Oh, yeah, it is. She's carrying a lot of beer. Look how much beer he <laughs> wow. We have the same visual analogy with the sticks, right? So every day we're just getting funny pictures and we're having the kids write about what's in the picture. Okay. And then here's the graphic organizer. What's my prep time, Julie, if I do the same activity every day? Well, probably about... Five, ma five minutes max, just what's to my, everything. What's my engagement if kids beg me to do that activity again? That's 100% engagement. Okay, they will beg you to do the activity again and again. How do I know I've been doing this since 97? So here's eight parts. This is what the activity looks like, okay? <clears throat> See what we do in the middle, Julie? We write yeah. a paragraph based on the palette. That's why it's called eight parts arts. So I have a palette of words and what do I put in the middle, Julie? You're going a paragraph. to put your paragraph based on yep. all of those words. And here's what kids have done with this. Oh my goodness. 
Wow. Yeah, and here's other variations. Primary, secondary source documents. Here's the original math reps modification. Here's kids, I, they're highlighting, Julie, in this one, they're color coding the parts of speech in the paragraph they just wrote. Oh my goodness. And I'm telling you, right now, we're trying to figure out how to fit in grammar. No, you Believe don't. Believe it or it's, not, how this are is how we you do supposed it. to fit into grammar? And no. I'm thinking, this is, this is it. This is how you do it. And then if you want, this is fun because once you do this, then we do sentence parts, which is the same exact game, except now they're going to do what, read this. Write an imperative sentence, write a declarative sentence, write an interrogative sentence, write an exclamatory sentence, title the picture, use there and there, write in a positive, write a semicolon, write a plural possessive, write a singular Ooh. possessive. And where can I get this already, the templates? Edgeprotocols.com. It's all free, sister. Oh my gosh, brother. Thank you. Wait, it gets better though, because I got to show you our super special picture collection that we have. I'm totally bowing. Wait, picture. Hang on. Cheers. You got it. <laughs> I'll, I'll share my vodka. <laughs> Look at these pictures we found. This is why you shouldn't leave your kids with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, you have to really look carefully at this one. She's making paper dolls out of cash. This is to die for. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Julie, you know, Alice Keeler always says, don't do something uh, a robot could do for you. Yes, yes. So another option is using something like quill.org or no red ink and having them do all the practice. It's interactive, they, you get the results right back. And those are really good for grammar. Uh, yep. Quill.org. It's free. I'm bringing it up right now. Um, no and red ink. The other one, and the other one. And no red ink. And I think that one's better for actual actual writing practice. Uh, I you think know, the, the, the Hemingway app is ridiculous. They're in the chat room too. If you want to save the chat. So, and that's even so in our clever. The, so we have Quill.org already approved. Here, and ready here's to go. what. If you look where my mouse is, Julie, this is what this is what um, Quill does for you. It uses AI. It says, combine the sentences. And if you don't do it right, it shows you what to do to make it right. Okay. Like Grammarly, very similar to Grammarly. No, no. These are activities. Grammarly's oh. feedback. This mm -hmm. is what it looks like for the student. Here's another example right here. The Quill Diagnostic. Try a sample activity. Okay, here we go. Oh, and by the way, it's in multiple languages. Oh. So for the kids that need Spanish. Yeah, or Portuguese or whatever. So right. ready, here we go, 25 questions. Vietnamese. Watch okay. this. I'll watch a movie at? Your, oh, while you're, while you're studying. Okay, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, yes. I'm gonna do it wrong so you can see what happens. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. So it, it's given you, this is the diagnostic, so it's not as interactive, but you get the idea. Yes. And, yes. and then it'll, it'll give you levels. Do, why would you correct this by hand? No, thank you. And, and this is free. It, it has the dashboard. This yeah. is free. It has, it has 150 levels. It has 150 levels of grammar or 150 skill areas. And like with, the, uh, with Grammarly, like Scott said, I'm, I'm, I, I tell my kids, I'm not going to correct your grammar anymore. I'm going to teach you grammar, but I'm not going to correct your grammar. Grammarly is going to correct your grammar, but I'm going to teach you grammar. So here's a good one. Here's the, this is the one I was looking for. There are 11 errors to edit a word, type and reclick it. Okay. Go to the it's that one's wrong. It's crew. So that's definitely, yeah. There's so it should be T-H-E-I-R. Where is that? Their ship sank. I'm just trying to find the sentence. There, right up, it. right up, up. Oh, right. there it is. Yeah. So, as Julie, see how this is subtle? You've yeah. got to find the errors. Yeah. You got to find the errors. Oh, I found one. Small A on April. And Julie, the the you can do um, 
a diagnostic, which is really nice right at the beginning for your kids. Jacqueline so then it, promised to find hope, find help, I mean. I found three. What was the other one? Uh, the first sentence of the second paragraph, Shackleton promised to find help. Oh, good. There, oh, there, yeah. is still, there is still the wrong there. They're up by two lines up from there. Ha, ha, ha. Um, ah, the there should be T-H-E-I-R. Yep. So, Julie, do you see how subtle that is? Yes. And then it wow. takes you through and gives you the feedback. Oh, look, we missed off of. My spell corrector should have gotten that one. Shack Shackleton should have had an apostrophe. Yeah. But this is, I mean, this is hard. This is legit. So it's not just some wacky little web page thing. So that's Quill and that's free and kids can sign up as a student. But what you want to do is sign up as a teacher. So you got that dashboard. You want yes. that dashboard. So John, does it have a feature where you can load up students work and then it will go through and help them find their own mistakes? I do not know about that. I haven't gone that far. What, is, what I do know is it does 400 grammar and writing activities. I think it's pretty pre-programmed. Um, for students that want to find their own, watch this, for what you're saying, uh, Ju uh, Pamela, I think that's you. The Hemingway app does that. that. The Hemingway app, watch this. The Hemingway editor, this will give the kids feedback. Like, I'm just going to let you look at that. It wow. gives you readability. It tells you the words. It tells you what the errors are. Yes. It does it on your work. And so do, do you have to scan your work in or do you no, just copy paste? Oh. The Grammarly will do that too, won't it? And we have the premium Grammarly. It'll do some of that. Grammarly catches a lot of things like active and passive voice and things like that. Yeah. So this, huh. is, Hem this is Hemingway. And you okay. just go, there's a desktop app, but you can just dump stuff in. Show them no red ink too. Like that's a good one too. See, it's, it's highlighting. Oh yeah. Oh, got that, got that. But Hemingway is really built for flow more than grammar. And then no oh. red ink's pretty cool. That's really, I see that as really good for writing, like finding evidence and mm -hmm. supporting your arguments and things. But I'm a little annoyed that they're not making everything free. Um, they're making a lot free, but I wish they'd just make everything free. It says right here, no red ink, free for the rest of the year, at least. Um, our, we've expanded our free offerings. Mm -hmm. So again, no red ink has planning diagnostics, unit diagnostics, practice. And for uh, I think Barb has probably left us at this point, but I'm tired yeah. of districts buying this crappy, 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 pulpy crappy curriculum stuff when this already exists pulpy. i don't need you to buy me pulpy. a district right. a district assessment i already have this right right <laughs> wow. and if we teach people how to do action research and compare you know pre-port scores for kids you know they can there you go evidence for why these are better than what they're mm -hmm. currently using i'm yeah. gonna do it <laughs> I'm gonna. Do, we're gonna have to in our fourth grade team. Somebody's get, somebody's gonna have to bite the bullet and just be the control team to do the pulpy yeah. work. Yeah. Then, somebody's gonna you know, have to say, "I'm gonna use the sucky model, and and yes. you guys get to use the fun model, right?" Yes. And, and you just go head to head. And I will tell you that, like on the math reps, Julie. So if you go to math reps. Math rep. Okay. Math reps is the math version of what I just showed you in parts of speech. Uh huh. So no, people aren't always able to translate what I showed them. Like they see it as too primary. Watch this. This is, this is gold right here. This is gold. And you can just go there and copy their Google slide decks and you own them. Oh, this is gold. Wait, this is not the good part. Here's the good part right here oh i want this yes i know you do because this is how much work your kids will do ah. every day but here's the magic julie what changes every day just the number only the number so what oh, do i need an answer key i do not no right? but wait there's more here's another one look <laughs> at this fraction one fraction two whole number oh my goodness 
but wait, there's more. <laughs> fraction one, fraction two, whole number. And then that built out. This is what they're going to do every day, every day, every day. Oh, this but is- But wait, there's more. Whole number one and whole number two. Area model, algorithm, vocabulary, divide, division toolbox, prime factor. And they build up to this. Wow. Every day. What changes, Julie? Just the Only number. Today. I don't need 180 worksheets. What? <laughs> Is it true that you actually sold vacuum cleaners before? I'm sorry. That's why no. I laughed out loud. <laughs> no, but my degree is in advertising. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just read in the chat no, box. That don't they believe everything you read in the chat box, Julie. Why do you think I was a good classroom teacher? I'm selling stuff to people that don't want it. That's what I do all day long. <laughs> but here's sucky fourth grade. Product, huh? I got you, Julie. I got you there. <laughs> so here's fourth grade. We bring it on down a bit. No, no, even though, because I have, I have kiddos that are my advanced learners and I want to be able to, yeah. I want to be able to, to get them to but look at this one. Be challenged every day. Wow. Every day, same thing. Just go faster tomorrow. Every and day, same thing. Mathreps.com. Uh-huh. I'll show you sixth grade right now too, because sixth grade's cool too. We still have people with us. We oh, still sure have three, we, do. we have three people watching. So you're down we still to got learning eight. happening. <laughs> Rational numbers. There you go. Okay. But remember the approach is the work is about the same every day. What changes is only the number. So my prep time looks like nothing or almost And the nothing. kids come in and they go, we doing math reps again. Yep. Am I going to get an A? You are. Okay. <laughs> you know what I also really like about that, John, is it uses the academic language. So they have to. Oh, read yeah. Yes. Every day. Look at this. Look at this right here. But, you know, the yeah. hardest thing for us to get kids to do. And Pamela, what happens is, this is what I noticed, is that when you're giving kids a different worksheet every day, they're spending all of their cognitive energy on what is it we are doing. Right. And the first thing that goes out the window is the academic vocabulary. Right. So how do you like this one, Julie? I'm loving it. Um, really, the today's division fact is. And then look at this go. one. And then uh, they got... This is how much work a kid does on one. There you go. Wow. And, uh, and guess, yes. Yeah, this is a goodie too right here. Look at this. Yes. Boom, 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 boom. Wow. Oh, my. Oh, and, and then the integer, integer uh, place map. Ooh, to die for. Right? And so the yes. idea here is the first day takes about an hour because I'm going to basically be walking them through every one. By Friday, they're down to nine minutes. Okay, question. Do I yeah. have to cami this or can it just be, can I just, I mean, like if I were to take this. Don't right? cami this. Don't cami this? <laughs> I mean, because I'm not going to pay, I'm not going, are, are kids going, kids are going to log on to math reps under my. Under I would have, I, I would either make packets Google or have them print it and do it on paper and send me a picture. Hmm. Oh, okay. Just have them send you a picture. Yeah. You yeah. want to lower that cognitive load, Julie, because it's so hard to do all that drawing and that other stuff, you know, yes. so you're paying attention to that rather than the content. So their, their thinking is divided. Mm. Yep. Yep. Good. Great point. Great point. Okay. So, so, but the other way you could do this. So the basic way is, and Pamela, I think we're saying exactly the same thing. Let them do it on paper. Why should the technology slow down their processing? Right. This is a perfect place for paper. Yeah. On the other hand, Julie, what if you did this? Remember when we did the math rep of the first grade one in Pear Deck? Yes. What if I did this? Area model, one slide. Division, one yes. slide. You just blow this up. Each box is one slide. Use the same Google slide deck all week long, Julie. What's your prep time? Because Scott wow. don't got no slides, so this is going to help him a lot. John, I have to commend you. On the fly, you came up with that one. Oh yeah, that's what I do all the time. <laughs> I live in the advertising background. Came up with it right, right on. Right. Vocabulary terms, all the academic language. You're right, Pam. This, yes, the, yes, yes. Especially with our EL populations, you know, that's the hardest thing for them. Right. 
Well, bear, bear in mind, Lisa Nowakowski that invented this works in King City. I guarantee you she has more ELs than you do. Yes. Guarantee. And her fifth graders are doing these and begging for more. When's the last time you had that problem in math? <laughs> Definitely. It's in the area of Napa County that you're in. Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, they're begging for more because they want it, not because they're scared of their mom. There's the variable. <laughs> well said. Okay, I'm going to eat dinner now. This is really Julie, fabulous. Free lifetime tech support. I know I've seen you on Twitter hanging out before, and you've not been asking enough questions. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. Well, then I've, I'm going to step that up. You've just thrown at me, if I were to count here, I've got at least a dozen, at least a dozen. My, the, um, the buffet table has grown. Right. Just do one at a time. Right. Oh my goodness. This is marvelous. Okay, tech support. And I'm gonna, Jul, Jul, Julie and Scott, I'm going to have to have you guys on here more often. I can do this all day, man. It was a lot of fun. All right, <laughs> we well, didn't even get it. This is going to hurt your feelings, Julie. This is just the beginner stuff. We'll get into the hard stuff later. Oh, man. Well, thank you. You didn't get to see slowly. Number Mania or Cyber Sandwich or Iron Chef. You didn't see any of the good stuff. This is just the warm up stuff. So, this uh, is what we've been doing, Mario, at the, at the 3 30 to 4 30s when uh, there's nobody in the room asking for help. This is what we've been doing with each other. Absolutely. Yeah, just yeah. Some really demo. great. Just slam through some demos. Yeah. That would be awesome. Thank you, Lori. The, the, thanks, I mean, thanks everyone for coming and yes. we'll thank you John. Yeah, and John your 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 wine is is yeah. in transit. <laughs> you totally nice. earned it. Right? You did you it for the great. wine. Well, and Scott, you. thanks for wingman and me yeah. on the fly. That was good. Sure. Anytime, <laughs> man. Have somebody you can jib jab with in these. Uh, so and Mario, music. he also likes brisket, you know. So Ooh, he's really a brisket. huge brisket fan. Wasn't Rudy's bar Rudy's barbecue in Texas ships cooked brisket, I'm just saying. <laughs> good to know i know Bar barbara barbara brought you brisket she did she fully brought me brisket yes that was so good <laughs> that is so cool that's really funny all, all right, right. Well, well, thanks everyone for coming thank you for the connections thanks, totally appreciate it. thank Absolutely. you john this was awesome thanks for sticking you're with welcome. us everyone and we'll see you next thursday yay yeah. and okay. uh, you're welcome to join us at our happy uh happy hour yeah, join the happy hour tomorrow, 4 p.m. Okay. We'll see you guys there. Okay, bye. Mario, can you stand? Thank you again. Yeah.